times we are asked to find the solution of an equation of a polynomial degree 3 or higher. Sometimes we're asked to do that when we're trying to find the x-intercepts to graph a polynomial equation, or other times when we're looking at solutions of equations that are applied to a specific setting. In this video, we're going to talk about the methods you can use in order to solve polynomial equations degree 3 or higher. So here I want to find the roots or solutions of the polynomial equation 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8x minus 5 is equal to 0. It's a polynomial equation because the exponents on the variables are whole numbers. So 3, 2, 1, and an exponent of 0 would be just your constant term. Now, also here, my polynomial equation has real coefficients. There's no i's with the coefficients in front of any of the variables. So I have to remember that if I do get a complex number being a solution or root of this equation, its complex conjugate will be there as well. Now looking at the equation to start, I see that it's already in descending order, it's equal to zero, and the highest degree term has the degree of three. So if I'm allowed to use complex numbers in my list of my solutions, as well as count the multiplicity if any root occurs more than once, I will have the same as the highest number of roots as the highest degree. So I would have three solutions or roots that I'm looking for. Now another thing to look at is what types of solutions are we looking for is in terms of positive, negative, or non-real. And we can use Descartes' rule of signs in order to get a table and a um, kind of a setup of how many we would expect of each type. So looking at the polynomial to start with, and if um, you're not familiar with Descartes' rule of signs, I have a video that goes through the specifics of it. But the number of possible positive roots of a polynomial equation is the same as the variation in sign or less that by an even number of the original polynomial. So it starts with a positive coefficient, and a variation in sign is defined to be if the plus or minusness of the coefficients switch as you go from left to right. So this is a positive coefficient to a negative coefficient. That's one variation. Negative coefficient to negative coefficient didn't switch, so that's not a variation. Negative to negative didn't switch, so it's not a variation. So there's only one variation in sign of this polynomial, so there's only one possible positive root. Now to find the number of possible negative roots, we look at the variation in sign of p of negative x. So p of negative x, you find, by taking out the x and putting a negative sign, negative x instead. So it's 2 times the quantity, take out that x and put negative x in its place to the third power, minus take out that x, put in negative x in its place to the second power, minus 8 times take out that x, put in negative x, and then there's no x to take out here, so that's still going to need to be negative 5. So my p of negative x well, negative x to the third power is negative x times negative x times negative x. When you multiply negative x, three factors of that together, you're going to have a negative product, and it's negative x cubed, times the 2 gives me a negative 2x cubed. Then negative x squared, negative x times negative x is positive product, and then x squared so minus an x squared is just going to give me minus x squared. So notice, you've got to do the exponent before you apply the minus outside. And you've got to think about what the factors would be and then what the product would be because of the exponent you're raising it to. Now this is just to the first power, so negative 8 times negative x is a positive 8x, and then minus 5. And when I count the variation, this is a negative coefficient to a negative coefficient. That's not a variation. From negative to positive is a variation. From positive to negative is a variation. So there's two variations. So they're either two or less that by an even number. Because if there's a complex conjugate that's a solution, it's 
conjugate pairs too. So those could be hiding in pairs. So 2 subtract 2 is 0, negative root. So I'm either going to have for my possible positives, possible negatives, possible non-real, and then your total. Possible positives, well you just have one possible positive root, but I either have two or negative, um, zero negative roots. So I could have one positive root with two negative roots, or one positive root with zero negative roots. My total is three. So since one plus two is already three, that would give me no non-real roots. But one plus zero does not make three. I need two non-real if that's the case. So I'm either going to have one positive number and two negative numbers that satisfy that um, polynomial equation, or I'm going to have one positive number and two non-real numbers that satisfy that equation. Now once I know what I'm expecting here, um, the next thing we can do is make a list of possible rational roots. Remember, rational is an integer divided by an integer. And to do that, you take the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the lead coefficient. So factors of negative 5 divided by the factors of 2. Well, the only factors of 5 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 5, because it's prime. The only factors of 2 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, because again, it's prime. And you want to take all the cases you can with these fractions. So you take the first number in the numerator and put it over each denominator, and then you take the second number of the numerator over each denominator. If there were more, you would continue and make out that whole long list. So we either have plus or minus 1 over 1, or plus or minus 5 over 1, or plus or minus 1 over 2, or plus or minus 5 over 2. And then if I simplify these, sometimes when you simplify, you get duplicate values, so you don't have as many in the final list as you do in the setup list. But you do want to put them in order. So when I think about this, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 5 divided by 1 is 5, 1 divided by 2 is a half, 5 divided by 2 is 5 halves, which is 2 and a half when you think of its value. And I want to put them in order from smallest to largest. So I've got 1 half then 1, then 5 halves, and then 5, and then I could have the negatives of those, so it's plus or minus, so negative a half, negative 1, negative 5 halves, and 5. So when I look at this, the smallest rational number that could be a solution of this equation is negative 5, and my largest rational number that could be a solution is positive 5. So when I want to window it, at least to try to find the rational root, um, because if I can get those kind of out of the way, then I can work at getting the rest of them from like the quadratic formula or whatever. I can window it from negative 5 to positive 5 and graph my equation on my graphing calculator. Um, and C in that, but setting the window from negative 5 to 5 would help me see all of the possibilities that I have for my rational roots. That still would leave your irrationals and your um, non-real complex numbers, but at least it'll get, hopefully, many of them out of the way and we can factor. Okay, so now, once I have that, and that helps me set up my window, and I used my graphing calculator to graph the polynomial equation. So I went into a TI-84 calculator, and I went after the Y1 in the graphing, put in the polynomial 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8x minus 5. 
and then graphed it, and this is the picture that you get. Now, the values that make this equation true are the x's that when you plug them in through the equation, you get a zero out. So that corresponds to those x's that if you ran it through the equation for a function, you would get zero out for the y-coordinate. Well, if you're getting zero out for the y-coordinate, you're getting a point that's on the x-axis. So the x's that when you plug them into the equation, you get zero out are called the zeros of the function. Those are x values that when you run it through the function, you get zero out for your y-coordinate. Or you can also think of them as the x-coordinates of your x-intercepts. Now I see that the graph bounces right here at an x value of negative 1. And recall from graphing, if you have a place where the graph touches the x-axis and stays on that side, then that number is a root of your equation or a zero of your function an even number of times. And then if it actually hits the x-axis and goes through to the other side, then that number is a root of your equation or zero of your function an odd number of times. So negative one, it looks like that's what's happening, and negative one was in my list. And I also know that I have a possible of either two or zero negative roots. And it's not crossing the x-axis at any other negative number down here. So I'm going to work with negative one, and I'm going to try twice and see if it works. And we're going to use synthetic division to help us out. So we're going to check negative one. And we're going to synthetically divide. Remember, look at it's in descending order, and if any power is skipped, you need to put a zero coefficient there. But along next to that, we're going to put the coefficients 2, negative 1, negative 8, and negative 5. And we're going to skip a line, bring the first number down without doing anything to it multiply what's in the half box times the number underneath the horizontal line and put it up underneath the next one. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Combine them. Negative 1 combined with negative 2 is negative 3. Then negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Negative 8 combined with 3 is negative 5. And then negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. And negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So we got zero as a remainder. And that means that if I put negative one through the polynomial, I get zero out as a value. So we found a root of our equation. Now, not only did we find a root of our equation, if negative one is a root, then x minus negative one is a factor. And then I also know that the coefficients of the remaining factor are this bottom row of our synthetic division. So this was cubic. We divided out x to the first, so now my quotient is highest power 2. So this is going to be the 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 is my other factor, set equal to 0. So I've started to factor that polynomial equation. Now for the other two roots, there's just the rest, the other two are hiding in here. I could just use my um, quadratic formula or solving by factoring because now this is down to quadratic. If I'd started at a higher powered um, polynomial equation, then I would keep doing this process to chip it down. And in fact, I'll probably do that in this video just so that I can demonstrate to you how you could use the um, synthetic division table again. But remember, once you get one of the factors down to a quadratic, you can just set that factor equal to zero in its quadratic form and then solve it by factoring or the quadratic formula or completing the square, any of those ways. And that's how you can find the roots when they're irrational or if they're non-real hiding in that final quadratic um, if you just have two of them that way. Okay, so... When I'm looking at this being x plus 1, and then 2x squared minus 3x minus 5, that equals 0, the remaining two roots are hiding in there. 
but I believe negative one is going to be root again. And when I try, I go into the bottom row numbers, what's called the depressed equation, the coefficients of where the remaining roots are heading. So I'm going to put negative one and a half box, and then my coefficients two, negative three, negative five, skip a line, bring down the two, negative one times two is negative two, negative three combined with negative two is negative five, negative one times negative five is a positive five, I get a zero, so again it did work, and so that's another factor of x minus a negative two. So I have x plus one, the factor we had from before, and then x minus a negative one again from the one we just found, so that's another x plus one. And then remember, now this one was quadratic and you factored out an x to the first, so that's down to linear, and its coefficients are here, so two x, minus 5 in parentheses and that equals 0 and then when you set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve for x we get x equal negative 1 x equal negative 1 2x minus 5 equals 0 so 